So for number 19, we have the densities of four different woods are shown below, and teak wood, balsa, cedar, and ironwood, and the densities given in grams per cubic centimeter. Which wood will sink when placed in a fluid with a density of 1.14 grams per cubic centimeter? Well, anything that is more dense than its surrounding fluid will sink. So any density greater than 1 and 14 hundredths, and the only one there is ironwood. So ironwood, letter D, is the answer for number 19. Number 20, what best describes an atom? Well, here's a little picture of an atom just to remind you. Um, here we have a core of a nucleus. Let's say these blue ones are um, protons and the red are neutrons although that doesn't make sense, um, because we would really have more neutrons. Some of these neutrons are not totally visible, let's say. Say this is a carbon atom here. So if we had uh, two, four, oh, five, five blue protons, then we would need to have five electrons, one, two, in the first ring, and then in the second energy level, we would have, sorry, I'm drawing with my finger here, one, two, and then we need three, four, five more electrons. It's not exactly evenly spaced here, but... Um, so in the first energy level, we can have two electrons. Next energy level, we could have no more than eight, and we don't need eight. We only need three more, because we have a total of five negatively charged particles on the outside, and that balances the six positive charges inside the nu nucleus. The positive charges are from those protons. And remember the red here, those are neutrons, those are neutral charged. So we have a dense inner nucleus, which is positively charged, very light, low mass electrons around the outside of the atom. So that's kind of a basic structure of an atom, and it says which of the following best describes an atom on number 20. So protons and electrons grouped together in a random pattern? No, they're not random, they're very organized. Il alternating? No, it's organized differently, I just showed. Core of protons and neutrons surrounded by electrons sounds best so far. Core of electrons and neutrons? No, it's not electrons. So it's C is the correct answer for number 20. Okay. So number 21, which of the following is found farthest from the center of an atom? Well, that would be the electron, because if you look over here again, um, the electrons are away from the center. They're outside the atom. They ring the atom on the outside, actually in clouds of energy or uh, elect probability spaces, but don't worry about that now. Number 22, when magnesium metal is burned in the presence of oxygen, magnesium oxide is produced. The properties of magnesium oxide, which is the product, are different than the individual properties of magnesium and oxygen because magnesium oxide is a what? Well, basically, whenever you have a chemical reaction fusing atoms together that are different, you get a compound. You're safe to say that's a compound. Mg and O are not the same element. They're sitting next to each other in the chemical formula like this. That means they are a compound. If they were a mixture, it would have said you get magnesium metal and oxygen gas. It would have said and, not MgO. It would say magnesium and oxygen, separate things next to each other in a mixture, but not chemically bonded. They're just physically side by side. A mixture is like a salad. You could pull apart the carrots and the lettuce and the tomatoes, and you'd still have separate little carrots and tomatoes and lettuce. But a compound is like baking a cake. Once you fuse the eggs and the milk and the flour in this sort of cakey substance and under high heat, it's, it's, you can't separate it back again and get an egg and a milk out of it. It's already bonded together. And it's not a solution because a solution is a special kind of mixture. 
uh, where you have a solute dissolved into a solvent, and this is this is not that. This is a compound, and it's not an element because it's not just one of these chemical symbols. It's two together. If it had said well, then you know, like Mg is produced, just Mg, then you could have said, yeah, Mg, magnesium, is an element, but this is, it's MgO. Okay, number 23. So the answer to 22 was C. Number 23, within a substance, atoms that collide frequently and move independently of one another are most likely in a what? Well, this would be a gas because they're colliding frequently bonking together, but moving independently. That's key. Liquids don't exactly move independently of one another. They kind of slide past each other. The particles are slightly attracted to each other, though, sometimes. You can have a viscosity in a liquid that means that it's kind of thick and they're slightly attracted to each other. So, really, the complete independent motion only happens with a gas. So that's why number 23 is C. Okay, let me move on. Let's see what else we have. Okay, number 24 says, what is the name of the indicated atom in the acetic acid molecule shown above? And what they are looking at right there, I'm gonna make this a little larger, is carbon. So pointing to the C, that's carbon. If it had said capital C and a little letter H, lowercase h, then it would have possibly been a, some chemical symbol called CH. There isn't one that I know of, but um, anytime you have a capital letter, that starts the name of an element symbol. So capital C, capital H are two separate elements, carbon and hydrogen. So the answer is A. Number 25, iron oxide such as rust form when metal, iron metal reacts with oxygen in the air. What are the chemical symbols for the two elements found in iron oxide? Well, iron is Fe and oxygen is O. So it's number 25 is letter C for your answer there. And um, let's move on over here. Number 27, a diagram of the periodic table of the elements is shown below. Which region is non-metals? That's number three. It's just a little fact-based question there. Number 28, the atomic mass of four different stable isotopes. Um, what characteristic is different? Each isotope has different numbers of neutrons. That's what makes something be an isotope, is having different numbers of neutrons in the nucleus. So it's letter D 